The heavy footsteps of giants fill the night, stirring the remote desert they cross with quaking, metallic thuds. However, these are not the towering monsters of myth. These bulky, 50-foot-tall humanoids, having the strength to level small buildings with one swing of the arm or the release of a single energy bolt from their unwieldy tube guns, are constructions of man. Hidden in their chests are the trained men and women who operate these machine giants, the latest in a long lineage of war tools. They are dubbed Bionic Mecha, or Bionic Manned Mechanized Infantry, and their pilots manipulate these massive suits of armor via precise skill on control throttle sticks and foot pedals. The Mecha marching in the cool, starry evening, their distorted, bucket-shaped camera heads beaming a low level of light, appear to be searching for something. These particular bonds are classified as Goliaths. This looks like the place, Colonel. Commencing operation, reports the lead Goliath's pilot. Message received, but watch yourself. We don't know their capabilities. A calm voice responds through the cramped cockpit's commune set speakers. A shot rings out in the dark as a Goliath pilot applies pressure to a trigger on one of his control throttle sticks, or CTS. The impact blows open a hatch on the ground that was partially covered by rough sand and earth. When the blast clears, a mecha-scaled cave is exposed. The lead Goliath shines its light inside, revealing an extensive passageway. Colonel, this is it, the excited lead pilot relays. But he doesn't get off any more as energy fire roars past him and takes out the legs of one of his men's machines. Turning the red-visored face of his bion, the leader sees that two energy machine gun turrets have risen from the topography and are unleashing a hailstorm of defensive fire on his Goliath teams. Team 2, see what you can do about those emplacements. The rest of you, you're with me. We're going into the compound, he yells over the deafening chatter of the ground-sprouted EMGs. Their pilots rhythmically pumping their internal foot pedals, the mechanized infantrymen of Team 2 go on the move and prove to be surprisingly fast for their size at the same time letting off a single burst of thrust emission from their back-mounted boost engines one after the next, the lead team's mecha leap into the forced cave entrance. The fight rages on above, most of Team 2 already badly damaged from the surface-based turrets, while Team 1 lands on the steel floor of the underground complex with a resounding clang. Weapons at the ready, everyone. We can't afford to be caught off guard again. Switch your lamps over to full capacity, the leader orders his mecha clutching its Renard IV and swiveling at the waist, looking for any sign of opposition in the ghostly shaft. Taking colossal, echoing strides, they walk by the rows and rows of tall, empty holding bays that appear they once held something, and recently. Just then, a bright red beam lashes out from a dark corner at the leader and lops his bion's head right off its shoulders. The mysterious blade of red flame quickly dances downward, delivering a blazing follow-up blow to the lead Goliath's legs that puts the mechanical giant out of commission. The source of the attack emerges from the shadows now to face the troop of Goliaths. The view is puzzling to the intruders of the subterranean chamber. Their assailant appears to be an unfinished mecha, the streamlined white chest the only place on its frame containing armor. In one hand it hauls a long metal spear, one end inexplicably lit with a vermilion energy extension. In the other it holds a small energy firearm. Its space-age robotic head has three red optical scopes that lock onto its next victim through the gloom in a cold-hearted stare. In the blink of an eye, another invader falls as its gun-toting arm and head are blown off. The Goliaths retaliate. Bringing their tube guns to life, they display punishing hot fire all over the skeletal man-mechanized infantryman's incomplete body. Within seconds, its staff-carrying hand is no more, shot to bits, and one of its cameras has been shattered. Its armor waning, the gray-toned, unrefined mecha skeleton drops its gun and dashes at the Goliath team, stabbing the first in line's waist with its good hand before driving it to the floor with its opposite forearm. Still, the mechanical attacker is far from a finished design, and it cannot take the relentless pounding it is receiving. Stepping back on its gargantuan legs, the pilot lowers its arms and shuts off what remains of its unshielded main camera an obvious gesture of surrender. Hold your fire! The Goliath leader shouts twice from the retracted chest of his fallen bion. He flips on his external speakers. Rogue pilot, come out of the mecha slowly with your hands raised! The undamaged armored chest of the sparking, unidentified mecha unfolds, opening up, and a man in his mid-twenties steps out as instructed in an unrecognizable uniform. 
My name is Lieutenant Deval Fennin, the black-haired pilot discloses under an even-tempered voice. The young pilot of the crippled Goliath climbs out of his open cockpit with a pistol. Very well, Mr. Fennin. Stay where you are. I am Captain J.T. Etter. You'll be escorted into Washington Defense Corps custody momentarily. As you wish, replies Fennin, a smug look on his face.